Lindenhurst is a village of 27,000 on the south shore of Long Island, New York. These are the people who grew up there and their stories. Everyone I know is from Lindenhurst. So returning guest, Phil Tahale, also our trustworthy art department. <laughs> uh, so we're going to talk about the project that he's been working on, which we couldn't really talk about uh, the last time he was on. But it's now out. I have my copy right here. Oh, awesome. Allie Cross, yeah, James Patterson. It just didn't show up good because of the background. It's like disappearing in spots of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but I but I've seen it so I've seen it so many times, like it's burned into my mind. So we're all holding it. I did not get to read any of it yet because it just came in the mail. Let me know what you think when you do read it. I mean it's, it's not full well, disclosure. It's I brought it, I brought it in the bathroom with me. <laughs> that's, that's the best way to read books, man. You know what? That's old school. I read part of this one in the uh, in the bathroom when I got it. So that's how you know you've made it when someone can hold your book on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> you know that might be true. But it's in the stack with the TV guides and uh, yeah. you know all the I catalogs. Miss, I miss TV guide. Cool. So yeah, I guess tell us about um, how you got involved with this. What uh, what the genesis of it was, and uh, you know the process of getting it together and getting started. So it actually starts with me not getting an art position on the project. So I was recommended by a professor of mine in school for a color a colorist position for a different book. It's out now. It's called the book is called Bomb, and uh, it's about like the creation of the atomic bomb and whatnot. And um, I did some sample coloring pages for that. <clears throat> And I didn't get the job. I guess someone else got it. You know, I spent a lot of time trying to get it like perfect. And um, probably like a few weeks, a month later, maybe the art director for that project recommended me to some another art director who was working on this project. So and then I had to just do like the normal kind of I need to do sample pages, which means I needed to take like a little version of the script they gave me for the pages they wanted and then i needed to draw that out completely like i would like if i got the job and um that was pretty much that but instead of just doing what they asked me to do for the project like they just asked me to do like i think it was two black and white pages of um just of those two panels which uh, i could tell you it's like a kitchen i mean not a kitchen but cafeteria scene in the book hmm. which is loosely based on our high school cafeteria oh and um anyhow i i did that part of the book i did those two panels but instead of just doing the black and white inks i i went ahead and i colored those two pages in completely i did purchase the book during the process too and i read the entire book before i even did the two sample pages so we should we should mention like uh this is proof we're not professional broadcasters. I don't think we said the name of this book once. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> no one knows what we're talking about. The book, the book is Allie Cross. Yeah. I said it, you guys. Okay. Jesus. <laughs> Allie Cross is. Uh, um, you could say it again. Yes, it's yeah. Well, it's one. Of, it's one of James Patterson's books. It's like a not an offshoot, but it's it's related to the main Alex Cross universe, which is one of his most popular book series. Um, and it's about Alex Cross's son, so it's more aimed at middle grade audiences, like that sort of, like for kids, you know, like middle school, early high school. And um, but this was just a novel to begin with, just a plain text. It was just a plain text novel to begin with. Yeah, and it's it did really well. It sold over a hundred million copies. I think it's New York Times bestselling book. That's pretty well. Yeah. And um <laughs> sounds like a made up number. <laughs> yeah, it sounds crazy. Um so I was I mean obviously I was I was ready to just say yes to doing the project, you know, if I got it that way. But uh in order to kind of ensure that I got it, that's why I went kind of above and beyond. And instead of just giving them the black and white pages, I gave them two full color pages. After reading the book, I kind of decided who were the main cast of characters you know, even the antagonists and, and whatnot in the book. And I just drew out entire character designs for the entire cast of the book. And I colored those too. And then I sent that in as my, uh, 
as my sample for the book. Might have been, I don't know, but well, the person immediately liked it, the art director for the book. But they said, you know, they have to go through whatever channels and see. I guess there was probably other people in the running for the book who also submitted their samples. And in the end, they got back to me and they said, you know, James Patterson thinks that you're the right fit. They said they were looking for artists for a long time for the project. And he just decided that I was the right uh, person for the job. So. But well, you mentioned the cafeteria in your book. Um, mm -hmm. I'm here on page 140, and uh, the main character's on the lunch line here. Is that Fran? Uh, <laughs> I serving, mean, him, serving him food? I mean, it, it could be. It, I mean, it's in a my mind. It's a friend like character. <laughs> in my mind, I'm thinking about them, you know. In my mind, there's a friend. But, you know, I always remember mm -hmm. them wearing hats and hairnets and stuff, so I kind of included that. And John himself does make an appearance in this book somewhere. He Which does. Yep. It's like at a candlelight vigil scene. That's where John usually hangs out in real life. So yeah, you guys can find me at all the <laughs> candlelight vigils in town. <laughs> I got him right here, page one fifteen. There he is. Oh, one page one forty two is the uh, and one forty. Yeah, one forty two was the, was the main page I had to do as a sample. Okay. That actually is the sample page. I never changed the art for it. That's exactly how I uh, sent it in. Okay. It, re it got recolored. But um, if people are listening and they have the book, they can they can look at it. But um, I'm actually in the book as a kid behind the main character on the first panel, just to his left, turned away from the camera. That's actually I included myself in there. And uh, they kind of recolored it, but Waldo is also in the in that panel. Like, oh, yeah. where's, Waldo, like where's Waldo? <laughs> <clears throat> He's in there hiding in the background, which I did a lot of weird little things like that if i could get them in there a lot of little easter eggs in the book yeah definitely i think that was cool fun to put in there especially because i i it's over 200 and i think 203 pages it's it was so much work you have to kind of uh find the yeah ways to make it fun yeah my next question was going to be like obviously in, in a plain text novel there's a lot of like exposition as far as like the action goes a lot of describing it and mm -hmm. you, you know, you have to kind of like cut that out and show it as an artist. Exactly. And it, it wasn't, it wasn't included in the, in a lot of the, the adaptation that was done by Adam Rao. It kind of briefly would explain what's going on and then kind of, kind of tell you what's going on in the scene, but it wasn't really. Yeah. It it's never like explicit. It's not like a movie script where it's like, okay, yeah. the character A goes to character B and. Blah, yeah, blah, blah. That, it's, it's just like they're in a cafeteria. And they're talking. So it was just kind of like, I have to come up with all of the rest of it. I, I know gotcha. what lines they're going to say. And I know what, I know what they're describing, but I think what was most important was me reading the book. So after I got it, I read it like another two times. Mm -hmm. I made sure like I knew what I was, I didn't want to like just go off the adaptation. I wanted to know like the, uh, the source material well, because if over a hundred million people have read it, they're going to, they're going to think about it probably. <laughs> They're like, oh, this isn't anything like this guy does a completely different thing. It's not like the book at all. And I tried to stay true to that. So for the rest of us who haven't read any of these, um, mm -hmm. this series of books, like what, what is the premise? So his, I mean, his father, Alex Cross is a famous detective in that world in Washington, DC. And I mean, all the rest of the books, he solves all kinds of things from murders to, serial killer type mysteries and mostly detective work. Um, this kid, his son is, you know, he looks up to his father and he wants to kind of, he wants to be a kind of a detective too. He's, he's just a, a kid in middle school, but any kind of stuff he can do investigations on and find clues. And he loves watching like detective shows and he's yeah. just generally into that world and kind of wants to like be his father. So. He wants to have the same career, it looks like. Um, yeah, without spoiling too much of it, but but just like as far as an overview of like, you know, what the what that world is in these books. For this one specifically, yeah. the first one, there's there's three of them. Um his friend Gabe has went went missing just before yeah. Christmas. And uh he just he knows as even because he watches a lot of detective shows, he knows like the first like forty eight hours or whatnot is if you don't kind of find your friend in that time, it's 
the likelihood of someone finding them is yeah is pretty slim so that really drives him to be like you know if the cops you know and the detectives on the case can't like find him already like i need to kind of try to find my friend myself kind of thing so he takes it into his own hands and so was this was this the latest of that series like up up to date mm -mm. or this no, is this was like this is in the middle this is the very first one and it's it was we'll say I think that when did the first one come out it might have been to 2020 let me check let me check real quick and i guess they plan on adapting them all to graphic novels uh 2019 it actually came out okay they they've talked about it they they asked me if i would have interest in doing it before i even finished this one like oh like if it does like does well like do you want to like continue the rest of the series that's something you'd be interested in obviously i said i said uh, yeah i'd be interested in doing that for sure so uh whether or not that's i haven't talked to them about like the next one yet or anything they're still kind of just wrapped up in this one coming out but maybe it does say on the website it does say alex uh, alley cross graphic novel series number one yeah so that may just tell even me <laughs> <laughs> the possibility is <laughs> is higher but i don't know you never know with that kind of thing and the publisher little and brown is that a uh, little little brown and company the actual parent company is hatchet book group okay um and the Im the imprints underneath that are jimmy patterson books that's like where james patterson does like a lot of his kids books okay and the other I guess it's under two different ones because also Little Brown books for young readers is, is part of that. So every time I answer that question, it's like, uh, it's three things. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it says, it says Jimmy Patterson on the front. So, and then once you open yeah. the inside cover, it's Jimmy Patterson books, Little Brown and company, New York, yep. Boston. And so serious distribution though. I mean, I got mine on Amazon. Uh, yeah, you could you could get it in Walmart. You can get it in all the bookstores, essentially, right? Barnes and Noble and anywhere you can purchase Barnes and Noble. Books. <laughs> I I visited two two Barnes and Noble stores to find it, and I I found it easily in both stores. So that was pretty cool to see. Yeah, and has there like, been any? I know it's uh, still early in the game, but any reviews or any? Yeah, any there's reception? some there's some positive yeah. reviews in already. Um, here I looked at one earlier. I'll try not to look at this stuff. You know how that goes. Although our, our chairman at the at SVA School of Visual Arts, he's always like, you know, if you can't take criticism or critiques and you're not in the right field, you know, art is something where you're definitely going to be critiqued and looked sure. at. And, uh, here's one. Overall, Alley Cross, the graphic novel, is a successful adaptation that retains the essence of James Patterson's storytelling offering a fresh visually immersive experience it's a must read for fans of the original series and anyone looking for an exciting well-crafted graphic novel so i mean that's that made me happy that sounds good it sounds like i did the right yeah. thing yeah <laughs> so, you know we'll see this is only like been out for two days now three yeah so you know i want to i i'm probably more interested in seeing some negative reviews but Maybe I'll, have, maybe I'll have some good ones, some morsels. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, if you do continue, it'll give you a better idea of, you know, what people are responding to and what they aren't. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, we'll get the feedback of one of my uh, professors or something. See what they think of it. That would be good, so too. How long from start to finish did this take you? It took almost two years. Damn. I started working on it during COVID. And it was, I mean, that was, it was kind of the best job to have during COVID at that point. Cause the first part of COVID, I had a different job. And once I switched over to this and could work from home, I was like, oh, okay. I just have to sit here and draw it. But that ended up being, I realized it was way more work than I actually uh, could imagine. Cause the deadlines were, they wanted things pretty quickly, you know, deadline wise. It is an insane task when you think about it, though. Like, you have to create an entire visual world yeah. out of a book that really doesn't... How how long was the book itself, like, that it was adapted from? 
it was it wasn't that long. It almost feels as as many pages as the graphic novel. It almost feels the graphic like novel is like two hundred pages, right? It's two hundred, yeah, like two hundred and three pages. That's a lot. The, the original <laughs> book, the original book was three hundred and thirty six pages. Yeah, so that's yeah. you know, you're dealing with a lot to make things happen and move the yeah. story along, however you have to. But and that was, I mean, I have never, I've always done shorter comics, you know, twelve pages, twenty four mm-hmm. pages. The average Marvel mm-hmm. comic, DC comic, is like twenty four pages, sometimes thirty two. But this, they're like, oh, this is two hundred and three pages. <laughs> and it was just, and it was my first kind of professional work where I was like, okay, like how do you draw two hundred and three pages, and how do you from nothing, yeah, yeah, or how do you schedule it out? How much, how many hours a day can I work on it? And I basically worked on it every day. So did they require like a certain amount done at certain periods? Yeah, definitely. Process okay. They had like from the start of the book, they had dates set already. The scariest one was the first one. They wanted the thumbnails done in a month. And thumbnail pages are kind of like loose sketches, loose sketches of of the page. You kind of like placing in word bubbles. They're empty, but you're kind of like deciding where they're going to go and where the characters are going to stand. It's just like storyboarding. It's like a a yeah, it's like storyboarding for a film basically. But they wanted all 203 pages in a month. (laughs) And I was like, and like doing the math, I was like, wait a minute, like. (laughs) <laughs> it's like 50 pages a week yeah <laughs> and well i was like wow this is like because i was like at first they didn't even tell me what the author was but once i knew who the author was i was like i guess i kind of like i have to do this like i have to do it well and i have to figure it out i didn't want to sound yeah. like amateurish i thought okay maybe this is maybe this is the normal uh amount of time you get to do for storyboards I talked to one of my professors later and he was like, you know, that's, that wasn't a lot of t- amount of time. Like <laughs> if they try to make me do it in a, in a month, I usually try to go for, to extend that part, even if I have to shorten. So it's, it's thumbnail pages is the first stage. Second is uh, pencils. Uh, third is inks. And in this project, I was lucky enough to be able to choose a colorist. So I chose the colorist. So I didn't have to do the actual coloring in the interior. Um, but I did give them color samples. So I, I, I colored the book a couple more pages. So they had a good set to reference when they colored it. Gotcha. Uh, like how I wanted to color it. If they could replicate the coloring, so they did a pretty good job. Who was the colorist? Uh, their name is Ray cow. And they also went to school of visual arts. So I, okay. I had, since I was under a, a NDA, I couldn't like talk to people about what the, what was going on with the project, but I reached out to my one professor who was my coloring teacher. He worked for image comics back in the day. He has his own, uh, successful comic book. Um, hold on a second. He's a pretty actually interesting person. His name is Mike Cavallero. His big book right now is, uh, Nico Bravo. And interesting enough, he was, I really loved him as a teacher. He, he's like a real punk rock dude. He's friends with the uh, Bouncing Souls. I think they have a song yeah. about him. I think it's uh, something Johnny X. Was he also a tattoo artist, or is that someone uh, else I'm thinking of? I don't know if he was. Okay. The, the, ballad, is... the, the ballad of Johnny X, huh? Yeah, yeah, Ballad of Johnny X. That song's about him. Okay. And um, it's awesome. Whenever they tour, and like you, you see him on stage with them playing guitar and stuff. He had his own band too, Johnny X and the Conspiracy. Um, just generally awesome dude. Like, and he was like the fastest person coloring, I've, like digital coloring I've ever seen in my life. He, he could select things with like the loose, like selection tool in Photoshop, like in- <laughs> instantly, like with no, like no mistakes. He would just go around the entire thing and like be done like in a yeah. second. And it was like, Magic hand. <laughs> it was, it was scary. I was like, wait a minute, we're supposed to be doing it that fast. Like, yeah. For time. anyone who's ever tried that, that's impossible. <laughs> it's, uh-huh. He could just do it though. He's just and like well, he's still talking to the class, and it's just like, oh my god, like, yeah, okay. It's like I guess I don't know what I'm doing. This guy must know what he's doing. He's, <laughs> he does know. <laughs> he does know what he's doing. Like, wow. So I, I went to him and asked him, like, do you recommend anybody who graduated recently who would be like a good fit? And he was like, 
yeah, I have a whole, I have a list of people. So he sent me a list. I went through all the different candidates and kind of like saw who I liked and what, like, you know, everyone had a kind of different style and I just selected three of them. Um, and I didn't do anything further from that. I, I just gave that list to the publisher and they contacted them separately and had them do sample coloring pages. <clears throat> so they took my pages um, took the color out of them, sent them the black and white pages, and sent them my colored versions of other pages, and just I said like, "Hey, can you color these sample pages similar to this other page?" And uh, I guess they got the they got the uh, the job. So they're also a, a cartooning uh, major at School of Visual Arts. So that worked out good. I figured, you know, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna select somebody, let's go to the master guy and see who he thinks. Yeah, <laughs> can do it. Johnny so. X himself. Johnny X. Yeah, he's he's actually a really cool guy, and he makes some really good books too. So. But do you think now, if you were working on another one, it might be a faster process because all of this, you know, what I mean, you've created the oh, world. Oh yeah, de definitely. I didn't know like the first thing about how to like go about it. Like it's like, okay, now I have to do 200 plus pages of thumbnail pages. And I was just like, I just like started doing it. I was like, what do I need to do? Like, there's no, there's no guideline. Mm -hmm. Even at first, then I, that's when I realized like, Hey, like what are the dimensions of the book? Like I needed to know yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> like, like are the ones from the, the ones from the sample weren't the same as the actual, the, they gave me the dimensions after. Luckily, like I can made it, fit to the book but the dimensions are a little smaller than your general comic book uh, yeah graphic definitely. novel yeah it might be the width of a normal comic uh, maybe even less but yeah it's uh it's definitely smaller and that was one thing i needed to figure out so i had to draw the pages out print them out and kind of give myself an idea of what they look like size wise because i worked on it all digitally you can't tell how big something's going to be like they want a really high resolution, so like you start if you start zooming in too far, you'll start drawing stuff that people can't see, <laughs> which is like a waste of time because you have to find a middle ground of like what people can see and like you know what's not distracting to the story too. But yeah, I didn't know the first thing about it, so that was the first hurdle. I did it. I was completely exhausted by the end of that month. I couldn't believe I finished it, and I just was like, wow, like that was the hardest thing I've ever done art wise, like ever. Yeah. Ali Cross, the graphic novel by James Patterson, out now. Yeah, man. I, I mean, so, I hope that people who pick it up. I know I know some people we know picked it up. You guys, obviously. Yep. But um, I reached out to a guy. I reached out to some groups in Guam, where my family, uh, part of my family's from, recently, just like uh, yesterday. And uh, a lot of them are going to buy the book over in Guam. So that's awesome. I thought that was cool. I made sure to in include in my bio that it was a. Uh, the Chamaru, which is like what the ancient language is over there, the name for the people from Guam. And um, yeah, one of them reached out to me, an artist, an art teacher over in Guam reached out to me today. He also draws comics. He says there's like three people in, in on Guam who draw comics. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> okay. Like, no one's, uh, it's really hard, he said, to like put out comics over there. But uh, It's far away, something. I've heard. Yeah, it's, it's super far away. One part of it, the smallest part is six miles wide. So I'm, I guess I can't be too surprised that only three people draw comics over there. But uh, they're pretty, it's one they're comic pretty for happy. Two miles. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> like, Jesus. So, yeah, it was definitely, it's definitely been pretty awesome just to, just seeing it in the store was probably the most, the most rewarding part of it it didn't it, it hasn't and, felt real even since i worked on it but that, that's kind of like i was like oh it's real it's actually here and you can hold yeah. it and thing yeah and when you, will you be doing any promo for it or is it all um I've, I've stuff i have stuff i've planned i plan to do some schools i've talked to people about doing our middle school maybe talking at our high school i've i've taught um I went in and, and, and like taught at the school at school of visual arts. I've had like uh been like a guest speaker in the classes and stuff, so I've done that. Um when I used to work at Microsoft, I used to 
teach classes there too. So it's, I, I, just, it, I don't know. I feel pretty comfortable going into the classroom and I want to talk to some the kids and see if I can inspire them to want to pursue their dream. A lot of people want to become a comic book artist and it, it's yeah. not clear. It's not clear how you do it. it. It never was for me. Like how, how like it works. But um, yeah, if I could do that, I went and I stopped at the first Barnes and Noble. Um, I joked with them like, "Oh, can you put me in the local section right here?" It was like right next to the information desk, and they're like, "You can come sign here if you want to like do like a signing for these books. You can come sign all the books." So I, I have to email her, but I might do that. So that could Definitely. be cool. But as far as like promotion. From the publisher, I think they're pretty much they handle that end of it. I'm doing my own promotion on social media, just get the word out there. Hopefully, uh, it does well. You know? I don't know if it'll sell 100 million copies like the uh, the novel version, but that would be amazing. So, we can't really stress this enough. Like, we're adults who have like that are injured, like a lot of our fan base probably listens, uh, what reads comic books and stuff like this. But mm -hmm. this is like a young adult graphic novel. So if you have kids, this is probably perfect for your kid. They're anywhere from like 7 to 13, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. And the kids the kids in my family are already reading it. They're liking it so far. So that's, I mean, they're the true people to listen to when it comes to this. Exactly. The, yeah, the adult critics don't like it or love it. It's, it's, it's more important to see... Um, what the actual audience, like the younger audience, thinks about it. I hope that they like it. Yeah. Having read the novel first, like, what do you think, like, young adult writing? How does that, how is it different from adult proper writing? Do you think hmm. in this in this arena, anyway? From from like the, I mean, I've read other James Patterson books, but I can tell that it was definitely written more simplistically. Like it's yeah. it's easier to understand for a kid. It uses less big words. It does. You, it, mm -hmm. Not the meaning, it, but is it literally just then? Like this is Alex Cross for children. You know what I mean? How we can take the same kind of vibe. Well, kind that of. Has. It has the same. It has a similar vibe. But uh, Al Alex Cross figures big into the book. He has his own scenes where the main character Ali is not even in the in those scenes. So it focuses on him as well. So. It's kind of considered a parent kid read as well. Yeah. So. Hand in hand. This is a funny aside here, but uh, I realized this week. So people in the Lindenhurst area might know that the South Bay movie theater reopened for the first time in like eight or nine years or something this week. Yeah. I just drove by and, there. Uh, I was thinking about movies <laughs> I had seen there over time. And in 1997, when I was writing for the Charles Street Times with Vito, <laughs> I was assigned to uh, interview the manager of the South Bay Movie Theater, write a review of a movie I saw, and I saw Kiss the Girls there, which is yeah. an Alex Cross That is. Movie. That's yeah. an Alex Cross movie. <laughs> okay. I love that movie. It's a really good movie. Um, that's another thing. I, I kind of looked into the existing visual representation of the characters. So, it's kind of so like... a Alex Cross in the past has been Morgan Freeman... Mm -hmm. Tyler Perry, and Tyler Perry has been in yeah, the yep. Uh, recently, that's a, that's a drastic change from one to the other. There, you know. Yeah, no, it definitely yeah. is. And they're having a there's a Netflix, uh, not Netflix, Amazon Prime TV series coming out in the fall, right? Yeah, there's a, a third person playing it now. I'm trying to look up his name real quick. So Ali Cross will actually be in that show. He might be. I'm not. I think I'm not sure what time period the show takes place in. This is another question. Did Ali exist in the Alex Cross books, or was Ali invented? To you know what I mean. He did. He did exist. Yeah. Okay. There's a bunch of. He has brothers and uh, siblings, rather. Gotcha. And um, they existed in there too. So, Aldis Aldis Hodge is going to be the new Alex Cross. Okay. Um. So he's a pretty big actor. Um, I guess it's going to be a, a whole series, TV series. And they already have renewed for season two already, even before it came out yet. So, Now, would you love it if they dress Allie on the show like your character is in the <laughs> book and took a cue yeah. from you? <laughs> it, it, could ha it could happen. Mm -hmm. um, 
But yeah, like I didn't. I was like, I could just draw a guy who looks like Morgan Freeman or a guy that looks like Tyler Perry, Tyler Perry, or whoever. Mm-hmm. Aldous Hodge wasn't <laughs> announced yet. Um, but I was just like, you know, I need to come up. I'm just gonna come up with my own version of it. So I kind of went back. I looked up like the descriptions of himself from those books and like how people see him and whatnot. And I kind of just kind of like, okay, let me try to figure out my own version of it. So it's not just like, yeah, trying to look like a, some actor. Uh huh. Um, I also, I based it kind of on my grandfather. So, and my dad, I kind of smushed, smushed the two together. So everyone in the book kind of is that way. Like the, the grandma, Nana is uh she's loosely based on my grandmother, like in her mannerisms and the way she looks and stuff. Um my friend growing up, uh Mike Furs, who's living down the street, his uh his dad was a detective. So I kind of thought about when I went over his house and like played and stuff, I was like <laughs> you know, his dad was always kind of serious and kind of like walking around and yeah. I kind of thought of that too. I was like, okay, so this is like an actual real world african-american family whose father mm-hmm. is a detective so i kind of thought about that too sure. when i when i was making the book <laughs> no i don't believe there's any police officers in my family my brother's a fireman but oh actually there is my my brother's wife my bro yeah i actually did talk to him about it too my brother's wife's father is also a detective and uh his daughter is also a uh, police officer my yeah. brother's wife's sister Sister-in-law, rather. Um, yeah, I mean, it was it was weird coming up with the characters, and I had to do all that before before I did the sample. I already had these character designs, like when I was doing the the preliminary work, and I, they liked them so much they just kind of they adjusted a couple of them, but in the end they uh, they look the same way that they did in the sample. The idea with so since he wants to be like his father, I'm not sure if anyone would notice it on their own, but um, he's wearing a blazer because like his dad's always wearing like a suit because he's a detective. So I, it's kind of like a kid version of of his detective, like you, you know, uniform in a way. So he's he's still a kid with a hoodie on, but he also kind of like wants to be like his gotcha. dad, so he's wearing a blazer. And that was kind of the idea. I also. Like for the cover image, because um, you know African Americans can be portrayed in, or black people in general can be portrayed in like negative lights with gangs and stuff. So I, I was like kind of picky and choosy. I, I made it so he's both wearing red and blue, so it's like he's not associated with any kind of like gang neutral activities. Yeah. Gotcha. yeah. If they wanted to say he was like that, you know, it's like he's wearing both colors. It wouldn't really make make sense. So. I I'd made a lot of kind of weird like artistic decisions. There's no guidance as far as any of that goes. I just they let me decide what all the characters look like and I researched their ages and what the kind of descriptions were in the book. A couple of things like I was gonna say like as far as like wardrobe and stuff, you obviously can't put like big brand names on their clothes or anything, but No, yeah, I can't You can't yeah. you, you could you could fashion things according to like, you know there a were particular some... era. There were some brands mentioned in the book. I'm not sure how that exactly works, if there's licensing or anything like that, but Yeah. He mentions that he has a Sony PlayStation in there and like by name. Uh, there's other things too, like where they're by name. And I thought that was interesting. I was like I, I guess we're allowed to do that in those situations, so we, I, Yeah, I think visually those... like a logo obviously is trademarked, but you could you could probably mention something in a book and that's fine. Yeah. You know? And I, I made it look exactly like it, you know. <laughs> yeah i was like eh, well if it's a playstation it's a playstation 4 and i, I kind of asked him i was like Can I, like should i make it a playstation 5 because it's about to come out and then i was like no you know what it should be a playstation 4 they're just kind of like they're younger kids you know they're not going to have the most brand new system sure, as soon yeah. as it comes out generally anyway but that's a big part of the story is them talking the kids are all uh they talk after school like through like their video games like that they play together. There's like a fake game in the in the book called Outpost, which it kind of seemed like it was uh what's that game? 
not Fortnite. Uh, you know, I guess it's kind of like Fortnite, and it's kind of like Overwatch. It's kind of like a mix, and it's called Outpost. So I kind of looked into those games and loosely based it around that. I didn't include the guns though, because those guns, those games usually have people with guns. Yeah. <laughs> Um, they didn't specifically say not to have any guns, but I was kind of like, this is like an, e- this is like an, it'd be e- very situation. funny if you just filled it with guns and they were like, yeah, maybe <laughs> <laughs> he's got three guns on his hip and he's got, you know, <laughs> he's got a rocket launcher on his back. You yeah, gave him two versions, guns and no guns. <laughs> yeah. That's what I say. It's like an ET situation. It's like, uh-huh. we're going to have to ed- edit this out later. So I just went and ahead they and they shot ET me. with their flashlights. <laughs> <laughs> it's all I, it's all I needed, man. Uh-huh. That's another thing I was going to ask, like content wise, um, when you were sending in drafts, were there a lot of notes uh, coming back at you as far as like, you know, take this out, put this in? Uh, in the th- in the thumbnails, not so much. Once we got to like pencils where it was more detailed, they they had changes for it. Um, so the it was like a big team. It was like I had my art director. I actually ended up having two art directors. I think two to three different editors. Um, James Patterson himself was basically an editor for it. Um, he approved every stage of it. So like he looked over the thumbnails and went, okay, that they're good. He didn't have any kind of edits there, but once we got to pencils, the editors and the art director kind of tallied up what they wanted to change, which wasn't really much small things here and there. And then after that, it went to uh, James Patterson and then, like, he would type his edits on there. So it was, there was rounds of edits. So I did – I guess they wanted to have their edits in before they finally sent it to him. And then he – whatever additional editing he wanted to do. It was, like, a PDF file. He wrote all, like, the editing on the side of it. And it's, it's It was interesting to see. Like, he's talking to me, but then he's talking to the editors, and he's kind of, like, making decisions across the board of, of how it should be. So – I was like, oh wow, and like when he when he really liked a panel, he would be like, oh, he's like, I, you know, I really love this panel. He's like, oh, okay, I guess it's like, that's a good sign. It's it's his it's his work, so as long as he's happy with it, I think that's good. So, but yeah, there was editing yeah. each stage. So then after I finished redrawing, redrawing whatever they wanted me to change in the pencils, um, I lettered it too. So I I kind of they they thought. You know, like maybe you should just do it without the lettering and somebody will add it later. But I, I told them since like it was really wordy, like in the adaptation. Like there's a, if you look at the book, if listeners look at the book, there's a lot of panels and every panel has like almost every panel has words in it. Yeah. And sometimes a lot of words. So it was the hardest thing for me was to fit. Make sure all the words they want included are there and I can still make the scene make sense. And that was that was probably the most difficult part of it. There was some times where I was like, I don't know if I can fit. Like they they like we went into bird's eye view of the backyard of the family walking across, and like that had no words. And I'm like, oh, this is great. But then like the following panels have like a ton of words. I so like, I so I probably full disclosure to anyone that is listening to this, like we are friends. <laughs> I yeah. I talk to you very constantly, but I talk to you maybe every day while you worked on it, and uh. Definitely, yeah. We both keep weird hours, so you would be up at like three in the morning, and I'd be messaging you like, "Hey, what are you doing?" He's like, "Oh, you know, they sent a revision. Needs to be an auditorium with fifty people and words. Like, <laughs> how am I going to fit all of it? You know." <laughs> it was, and I did, and that's kind of loosely based on the high school auditorium. Uh-huh. It's not exactly the same. I was going to be like, "Let me like get it exact," and I was like, "I bet they'll be like." Like, why is this? I was gonna see, like, can I go to the high school and like ask them to walk around the hallways and take photos of it? It might have been that, but like, you went to the (laughs) you went to the extent of like 3D modeling, maybe like a what I did, and then yeah, and then basing the angle off of that for that scene, I did. Yep, yeah, it was too difficult to just like pop out of my brain. I was like, I need to, there's so many seats, I just had the three dimensional, like movie chair and i kind of like copied and pasted it until i had like a ton of chairs um i just had to find solutions like if i wasn't going to make the deadline it was like i'm holding i'm not holding i'm holding up everybody whatever i couldn't do like fast enough i'm holding somebody else up like the colorist can't color until i finish my part of it and 
the editors obviously can't edit until I send it in. <laughs> and it was just like, how do I get this? Like, I just had to work as fast as possible. In the end, I kind of had to decide, like, what, what are the most important scenes? And then I would make those, like, I would spend extra time making those more detail-heavy, like, emotional scenes. And the simpler kind of scenes, I kind of tried to keep them, you know, less detailed. There was a detail level that they wanted. Um, at first, they wanted, like, a more childlike version. And then, like, I sent the pencils, and they're like, okay, can you, like, raise the level of detail, like, a little bit? Like we we talked to everybody and I think maybe it should be, it should aim for like a little bit older audience. So like I had to redraw it again, like more detail. And they're like, can you redraw it again, even more detailed than that? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I guess so. And then I was just, in my mind, I'm doing the calculations. I'm like, wait a minute, if they keep raising the detail level, and I still have 203 pages, like this is like, the work is becoming more and more. Like every time they ask that, I'm just like, oh man, this is gonna be. Mm. And I've, obviously, that's why I was up talking to you at 3 a.m. I was up almost every day, probably at 3 a.m. I found the most creative time to work on it was, was at night. So it just, I be, quickly became like a vampire of sorts, a night a night person. I was just up all night, every night, and sleep like in the early part of the morning. And then go like right back to it, just like eat and shower and stuff and just start drawing again, like. Obviously, it was COVID. There wasn't really... I was pretty cautious about COVID. I already had had it as soon as it got to New York. So I was kind of like, this is... I was really sick. So I was like, this is like not a thing to mess around with. So I didn't really go many places. I kind of just worked on the book, walked my dog, and just tried to get it done as fast as I could. But uh, hopefully, you know, it all feels really cohesive and whatnot. I, I had even final edits, even like in the coloring stages, I would go back and once I knew they were kind of like, this is going to be like the final, like the final version of it. So like anything you want to change on it now, you're going to have to, after I did all their edits and, and James Patterson's edits and kind of like, if there's anything you want to go back and look at and like fix, which I did and I had to kind of coach the colorist through the coloring as they went through it too. It's it was complicated. It was way more complicated than I thought it would be. So it's like uh it's it's a it's a whole team of people, you know, it's kind of stuff to like work with mm. everyone's expectations and preferences and whatnot. So lots of emails. <laughs> how much how much time passed between when you sent in your final stuff to when it now, I guess this week when it was published. Oh, that was a while ago now. I want to say, like, I think I finally stopped talking to them about it. It was, uh, might have been November, December, somewhere in the fall, this past fall. That's pretty quick then. <clears throat> yeah, for them to print it up and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But that was kind of just like the final touches because I, I had a different cover completely. Um, and then the other art director went to had to go to another book. She was with me for probably a little more than half the book. The next art director and it was uh, like, we want to try a different cover. And uh, that's what ended up. The second cover is what you see on the front. The original cover was him running kind of away from the camera. And they thought, oh, like it is really good because it was completely done, like to the same level of quality as this cover. And they're like, but we think maybe he should be more like engaging with like running towards the camera, like uh, like so he doesn't look like he's he might be running away. Yeah, he's searching, and he's looking over his shoulder to see if anyone's behind him. But like, you want him to be like more determined, like which I can understand. You didn't want him to you didn't want him to seem like he was like scared running away from somebody when that's not really the story. He's just out looking for his friend, investigating anyway. But it would be cool if they included the second cover somewhere. I don't think I'm allowed to share that with anybody or anything because it's kind of they own the they own the rights to that stuff. I have to talk to them if I'm going to share stuff, and depending on what it is, if it's not already if it's already released to the public, I can just like reshare whatever. But 
I can only share a certain amount of pages from the book and stuff. So, gotcha. obviously, like specific pages. No pages. I, I can. I have to run it by them, but there's only a certain yeah. amount I'm allowed to share <laughs> from the book. 198 a day. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they don't want me to share the entire book on the internet. Yet, so. So, gotcha. I mean, in, in in our in our day in our society now, like you could definitely probably people can find a version of it because it's there's a digital version of it. But I was gonna say, have you looked to see if like it's on torrent sites or anything? <laughs> yeah, I haven't. I should go check after this. Yeah, I wonder if it's available for free already. Which you know, I, I come from the punk rock world. If they if they uh if they especially if they can't afford the book for some reason uh-huh if that's how someone wants to get the book let them have it you know yeah if somebody has to gets to read it that way on i have no problem with that. <laughs> well if you can buy it buy it everybody <laughs> I if you so. absolutely cannot afford a 10 dollar book uh they can't see know. it but i'm wearing i'm wearing the uh, i'm wearing, wearing, my, wearing our shirt right now yeah, I'm, yeah. Wearing, I'm wearing the podcast shirt right logo now, so. created by Phil also got to yeah. save some don't buy too many copies. Also, uh, buy some podcast merch. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Uh, congrats on this. This is huge. Yeah, Very I cool. mean, it's it's pretty wild. It's it's looking like it's it's doing well so far. I've kind of looked at some stuff. I I, I have a saying that I like to see my name in places I didn't write it. Like you get excited when you see yeah, that's true. Your shit out in the world. This is maybe like the coolest version of that. The shit you drew in your room going crazy for two years is in like a store full of every book you've ever heard of. You know? Yeah. My my step <laughs> my my mom's really proud. My stepmom in California found uh she found the book out there. So that was it's out there in the world. It's really I, like it's really real. So it's if people do want to read it, they can pick it up, which is yeah. pretty amazing to see. We got to go to the airport and see if it's at the airport bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just might be, you know. Um, That's how you know you made it. Yeah. That Next to sick. Stephen King and uh, uh-huh. whoever else. Someone's on the airplane reading it. Like, <laughs> if I see a kid reading it in public, I would probably blow my mind. Yeah. That would be like, wow, that's pretty amazing. Um, Will they kick you out of the bookstore if you just start signing copies on the shelf? Or... I, they said I could have, but I was like, I think I, I have to like. Uh, <laughs> I was like, I need to check with my publisher real like first. Yeah. I didn't want to hey, just your autograph now, Phil. <laughs> yeah, start like just like because I've heard people have gotten trouble for doing that or getting kicked out of stores. Yeah. For other yeah, books, I mean, I can understand that. <laughs> yeah. Even like they don't care. Like the person. The consumer might not want you to like sign. They don't like it when I start writing in the books at the books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they they might not really like. They might just want a pristine copy. Like they might not care uh-huh. about your signature. And you're yeah, like the baseball you know, card is worth less once Michael Jordan signs it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't want people just writing all over the book. So I'll have to see what the what if there's any rules or regulations or stuff with that. So, but yeah, man, it's it's a surreal thing. It's really uh. It's really here. Hell yeah. And uh, I'm pretty happy about it. Hopefully it can it does really well. It's only been out for a few days, but I think it's number three on Amazon or something for books about runaways. It was, <laughs> it was number it's very specific. <laughs> it was number five it was number five when it first happened. But all the all the general numbers are moving up, so Hell yeah. People, that means people must be purchasing it. That's the only way I can kind of gauge if anyone's getting it. I don't know. Like, I guess I could ask the publisher, like, do you guys have sales numbers for this? I don't think that's a thing. So mm. it sounds kind of weird to be doing that, too. So <laughs> <laughs> You got Google alerts set and shit. <laughs> How's it doing? Is it doing good? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, no. they, they're, they're busy. Like, even like I send them emails, sometimes they don't respond for like a while. So it's, I talked to one of my professors. He's like, you might not realize it, but. You know, they're not just working on your book. They're working. They could be working on dozens of books, if not. They could be working on hundreds of books, and they're just trying to get them all done and out. You know, to press. Now that my project's finished, it's not as important. Like it's not as <laughs> urgent. Sure. It's kind of like you gotta just kind of settle down and be like, okay, I just have to wait for them to respond to me. Like, what's going on? Is is is, <laughs> is it doing good? Like, I don't know, but. I was happy to see James Patterson posting it and stuff. So, hell yeah, that made it more real too. It's like, oh, it's on the official website. 
available in hardcover and paperback. Yep. Oh, I actually, really? I actually like the uh, the paperback version. Yeah, Come it's on. got the uh, glossy kind of. Uh... Yeah, this was an idea I had. Um, they didn't tell me if they were going to do it or not. I was like, I was like, oh, you think we can like maybe get like some like foil like behind the letters or something instead of white? Or if not, you think we could get like a spot varnish on the cover somehow? Like where like part of it's yeah, glossy. It's, a, and it's almost like a decal. You know, like I, had, I had not looked at the hardcover one without the jacket on it, and that's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's like a scene. <laughs> that's a scene. One of the early scenes in the book. Um, John has the hardcover. I have the paperback. For everyone listening, I have the paperback. I, I my copy I bought in the store. I'm still waiting for my copies from the publisher to get here. I didn't get them yet. They're supposed to send me like a box of them. Um. But yeah, I was like, wow, they actually did the thing I was I asked them about. They never got back to me to say that they were doing it. Yeah. But when I went to the store, I was like, oh, they did it. It's got it looks really cool too. When you look at the uh, like the light shines off it differently. Which is uh it's scary that they gave me so much control. I thought it was gonna be more <laughs> more strict. Yeah. Especially for my first thing like I've ever done. Like uh, I was like, are they gonna tell me what everybody looks like? Are they gonna tell me how things should look? One thing that I think no one will know, I've kind of talked to people about it. Many of the locations in the book are real. They're real locations in Washington, D.C. I remember this, too. You explaining like you were Google mapping shit to like find out what. Yeah. And I was looking. I, I actually discovered like the streets in the book are the same as real places in in real life. So then I used Google like maps and Google Street View to um, walk around the blocks. So I walked around the, I kind of marked off where everything was on the map, the, all the places that are, that happen in the book. And I tried to base everything off of real places. So like they go like the kids, the kids like on like 14th street or something. And they say he walked over two blocks and made a left. Like I went on the map and I walked over two blocks and made a left. And I saw like what kind of houses are there. So I was like, these are the kind of houses, like the houses in the book are the kind of houses that are in that actual neighborhood in real life. I don't think anyone, I guess if you live down there, you might recognize that. Even the house that the family lives in, in the book, I, I like found a house on that block. And then like, I found a, like a Zillow listing or something for the interior of the house. So then I, <laughs> I, so then I like knew what the house was laid out like, and I redrew the house to be exactly like a house that was on that block in real life. So it's kind of like a, awesome. like someone, someone could move into that house and get yeah. this book and be like freaked out. This is my house. Yeah. <laughs> like it's not the same color and stuff, but it's it's basically like the same. It would be the same house, like repainted or whatever. The garage. Everyone listening right now is in that house. <laughs> yeah, Alley Cross is in your room, bro. He's, yeah, he's somewhere in there. Um, but yeah, like I thought. I mean, I, I figured if someone, I was I was talking to a, a friend of ours recently, and I was like, if someone based a book did a graphic novel about a character who lives in Long Island and they just drew some other random place and you pick the book up, like you would know that it's like completely It'll wrong. be disappointing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like <laughs> this isn't anything like Long Island. Like why did this guy do this? He just drew random houses that don't make sense. He called it Long Island. And just said, this is Long Island. This is what it looks wow. like. So I was like, let me, let me like take the extra, go the extra mile and just like really like the church in the book is actually a real church. The um, the school that they go to is it's based on the actual school that would be in, close to that neighborhood. I uh, even like at the very like end, there's like a there's a scene, like the ending scene, like all those places are pretty accurate to like the real places in real life, which was a lot of work to do. But uh, I think in the end, like I'm saying, like if someone did it about, about Long Island, I think if they lived down there. I'm like, oh, it's pretty accurate. So, like, the cover is close. I added some taller buildings just for, um, just to make it look more interesting on the top part of it. But there is a block, like a side block, that you can see the Capitol building from if you're on the, if you go walk down this certain block and you look down the street, you can see it, like, down the street. Yeah. I kind of tried to, um, replicate that. I, I, I did straighten it out a little bit. It, you would see it kind of from a side angle. 
but I was like, oh, no, let me straighten it and do like a head on. But other than that, it's pretty much you could find a street and go take that picture if you wanted to. And uh, it would be accurate. So, I, I mean, I thought I thought that's a, a big thing that no one would ever notice unless I said it. So unless you live down there, then you're like, oh, I know this place that's over here, whichever, you know. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of work. That's, that's all I could really say. If you want to do it and you, <laughs> you want to be a comic book artist, it's it's a lot of work. It's not a, it's not all fun and games. It's a lot of late nights, endless drawing and redrawing and asking yourself if you even know how to draw anymore. <laughs> you after you're drawing for a certain amount of hours, you're like, like am I like what am I even drawing? It's like. But it's amazing, like when you think of how much content there is out there now, and how how much is coming out yeah. day after day. Just a lot of people working a lot. Yeah, not they must be nonstop. I mean, I I watched some of my favorite, like I've watched a lot of my favorite comic book artists work when I was. I watched Jim Lee's, uh, just like the favorite famous X Men artist. He does like live streams. He did a lot more of them during COVID. Live streams of just like him drawing like a full comic page from beginning to end and what do you know he's staying up until like five o'clock in the morning <laughs> like he's like the sun's coming up and i'm not done with the yeah. superman page and like to have him doing that like one of my like idols staying up all night drawing it like at the same time i'm drawing mine i was like oh this is you know i guess this is what it is <laughs> he'd order taco bell like in midstream to, like, his house. <laughs> he lives in calabasas and like a mansion so it's it's a different kind of scenario but of course he does. <laughs> <laughs> of course he does. Yeah. So it's like, uh, I can't just order Taco Bell. You can now. You can do it now. But I think they said they. I, th I think they have a Taco Bell within the community. <laughs> I think he said a McDonald's or something. I was like, convenient. Yeah, imagine like yeah. it's just like next door. Like they have all their. I guess they don't really have to leave that <laughs> that community much. I don't know if they have a grocery store or whatever, but they kind of like describe it like during the streams. It was pretty interesting. So it's just like. But to see him sit there and draw it, and like he's obviously light light years away from like like for me like he's been doing it since late eighties or something, so it's like effortless to him. He's just like, oh, the page is done, you know. It's like how how it's like way more complicated than anything you've ever seen. Like, it's scary. I guess maybe I, I if I get to a scary point, then I'll know I, I've done it. People, if I see looks of fear or something. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm working on something, I'm like, oh, here you go, guys. Like my colorist teacher. Were there any particular artists like that you drew influence from for this particular project? Uh not you know, not really. I mean I I just have a list of influences forever. But um I think I I just wanted to make sure that I told the story correctly. The most important thing to me was that it flowed properly. Like style wise, it was one of my teachers had this uh, this thing he used to say. He's like, everyone's kind of like worried about their style all the time, and when it comes to like art and drawing, and uh, he's like, style is really just an accumulation of, of your mistakes. So like, you drawing eyes a certain way or a nose in like a certain way, it's it's not actually like correct to reality unless it's like a portrait of somebody. So like, sure. The way that you imagine a nose to look like two dimensionally on a piece of paper is that I mean that is your style. Your style is just automatically it's just built in. So it's kind of like as you get better and better, you know, you're gonna focus more on like whatever it is accuracy, but I didn't try to like copy a style or anything working on it. But I just have a lot of all my big influences I thought I, I definitely went back to Wells of like uh Another, another, uh, what's her name? There's a, a girl who draws, uh, she draws comics for, I think it's the New Yorker. She came to speak. I think her name is something Frost. Is it em Emily Frost? I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Her name. I forget her name right now. Well, sorry if you're out there, but, <laughs> um, she came to the class and she's like, somebody says like, Oh, like, how do you like stay motivated and like to doing like drawing all these comics every day and like putting them out? And she's like, she's like, I, there, I, you don't, she's like, you don't, she's like, you have to keep falling in love with the, um, 
with the medium. You have to keep falling in love with it over and over again. You have to like continually make yourself like remember why you love this thing because if you don't remember why you love the thing and you when you're working on it, it's kind of like it becomes a you know just an any old normal job. You know, it's 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 a lot of work, but you yeah. have to remember like why you're doing it, what you love about. Like what? What do I love about comics? What do I love when I see comics? Uh, it's like it's like you know, music is the same way. Like, what is your, what's your favorite part of the song, yeah. and like, how can you create your own song that has the same effect? You know, it's kind of it's gonna make the listener or or the reader like feel something, or it's just it's a lot. You know, it was it was more storytelling wise, like for my teachers, like they were pretty like informative like i had this one uh, professor david mazzucchelli and he's like a really famous batman artist a daredevil um he's done his own like more independent style books mysterious uh pilot uh rubber blanket and he was a really big in my uh graduating year of college and like explaining like how you should tell a story and what's important like you know he's kind of like cut the fat out like if it's not important to like if it doesn't really help the scene then it shouldn't be there i guess don't just include things that aren't necessary really you know and uh i think those kinds of things you have to kind of think about it's like if it's not really serving the story then like what is it if it's just there to make it like look cool and be stylish like that's one thing but you, you have to re remind yourself that it's a it's a narrative and that especially something that's this long you have to remember like the person has to like engage with the story and feel like it's like happening in real time you know like it's a uh, unless it like has like a time jump or something so you don't want them too distracted no, by the look no. of it and the style of it especially to and take the, them and out it's of a the younger audience yeah. too it's not the most action-packed book but i did try to like insert like bursts of like like it's a lot of characters talking in rooms like you know like we are right now like how do you make that seem more interesting so i would like kind of change the angles i could have just kept it static and just like right. had them talking to each other without really moving but i tried to like be a fly on the wall in the scenes and stuff you know as much as i could because a lot of the like certain scenes the um the person who did the adaptation like had specific they had their own like view i pushed back on certain scenes and i thought like that doesn't work a big thing in like in like a sequential narrative like uh like comic books is that you don't show and tell at the same time you want to show and not and you know and not tell and show something else um i was explaining this to someone recently like if you're watching a movie about two characters talking in a diner you're not just going to focus on the two characters like talking in the diner you're going to cut over to the waitress walking with the trays or you're going to cut over to you're going to show like a dirty like glass of water that shows that the diner's like a greasy spoon type spot and show the city outside the window or whatever um rather than just like you know showing the exact thing that's happening in the scene which is kind of which i, I guess is they did like a lot of that because it's four kids and the in the, like you asked earlier, like how is it different from like the, what the, the main Alex Cross boats, like the ones for adults? Definitely, that's like the it's less hand holding. It's uh, it's more serious in the in the adult book, and like they do more experimental kind of ideas. In the in the children's book here, in this one, it's it's less like that. But certain scenes, I kind of push. Like let me, I know when I was a kid, I liked to read like stuff for older kids. I like to read things that weren't necessarily for kids. Like, I would think this cover was cool as a kid. Like, my internal kid was like, "Oh, this guy, this kid's running around at night when he's not supposed mm -hmm. to." Like, looking for how, his how old is the character in the book? Uh, it's it's not actually clear. Okay, I guess he's like ten to thirteen. I think. Gotcha. It's not clear. I looked that up everywhere too. There's things that I I wanted answers to that there was no answer to. <laughs> it's just never been clearly stated. Mm -hmm. Like if you go through the book a million times, you can't like figure it out. I, it might be in the later books. I do own the other books too. I haven't read all of them. I've read half of the second one. Let's see what the internet says. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure what his age is. I think it's. I think it's like 
He might be the youngest, Tim. He's 48. <laughs> I think, you know, the idea is to have it be in the in the reading age. But yeah. I think the the reading age was pushed up a little bit on this one, but he's still not in high school or anything. He's, uh-huh. he's still a middle school kid. That's cool because you could do like a Bart Simpson and just have mm-hmm. him be the same age. Yeah, forever, I think that's. You know, I think this probably was <laughs> on purpose not to mention his actual age, you know. Uh huh. Because they yeah, could have yeah. they could have kept mentioning it, like even when the kid was missing, like oh, whatever age kid is missing, like in the newspaper or something. But they yeah. didn't do that, so they must not want to specifically say. They didn't say he's about to graduate middle school, and they didn't say he just started. <laughs> just like there are no birthdays in the Alex Cross universe. <laughs> they might not be. <laughs> They might not, or they, they get to the scene and they're like, oh, she doesn't like saying her age. And you skip over <laughs> How it. How old are you? No. <laughs> yeah. And you just completely avoid it. It's like that, though. It's like it's not really stated in there. Because I looked for specific stuff to try to figure out exactly who the characters are. And I was just kind of like, oh, there's no answers. Like in any, there's just nothing. I just had to come up with it. I'll just make up whatever it is. He doesn't have an outfit that he wears. Or they don't describe the kid's clothes. I tried to stick to like their. Uh... I had to. Look... It was so weird. Like I had to look up like kids' style. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. but then like all you get is like crazy, like almost costume like clothes. Like kids uh-huh. don't actually wear. And I was like, I can't use this stuff. This is like <laughs> they like stepped out of a Gap catalog or something. Yeah. Like, perfect outfit. Like, <laughs> no, they're wearing Crocs and freaking. I I, I contemplated. I contemplated putting pants. the Crocs in there, man. I only put a couple of track pants. There's some track pants in, hidden in here. <laughs> they're, they're there. It's the pajama society now, right? Could you imagine, like, if everyone in high school, when we were in high school, showed up wearing pajama pants? And, uh, I mean, I guess a lot of them did, pajama pants and flip flops. <laughs> yeah, some did. Some, some did. did, yeah. I, I kept him, I kept the main character at least. Like, I'm like, he's kind of, he's not the coolest kid in the world. He can't be, like, He's not the most popular kid in the middle school. No, but he likes detectives, so he wants to look sharp. You know, he, yeah, he's, he cares and, enough about what he's doing to look good doing it. Yeah, and he's he just obviously his dad. I would assume in an imaginary world, his dad is like, "You're not wearing your, you're not wearing the crazy baggy pants with the uh, <laughs> with the backwards hat and like, uh-huh. yeah, he doesn't have the new foam posit basketball shoes or whatever he's. Like, uh-huh. I don't think he's, he's wearing your that. Iverson jersey again. <laughs> yeah, I don't think like the whole entire book he's wearing. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, but I, I kind of delineate, delineated that sort of stuff to like the side characters or kids in the hallway or whatever. People on the street, maybe. But uh, it's a weird thing to have to figure out everything, like the way an entire world looks. For sure. Kind of. Uh, I probably spent more time gathering references than anyone could imagine. It was. Uh, you really, I mean, you really had your work cut out for you because a lot of people think like drawing comics, you'd be, you know, drawing, you've drawn other things before, you know what I mean? And made other comics and stuff like that. But like, this is completely, so you're, you're adapting a work by, you know, a well known. Someone else. Yeah. yeah. I had like the responsibility to like make sure mm-hmm. that it's good. It That's was like a, a lot of solve for X kind of deal, you know? That did, it landed me in the hospital at one point. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was drinking a lot of coffee and not sleeping right and like one day I like I think I was up for almost I went up for a whole day and I was like going on it I was like I'm just gonna make the deadline I'll just stay up and just like drink it I drank more coffee I felt yeah. good at, like at the, at the computer and I was working on it and then I was like you know I don't feel good all of a sudden <laughs> somewhere at coffee coffee pot number two I was like I don't feel good and I was like I was like, nope, I'm not good at all. I was like, I think I was like, do I have to go to the hospital? And I'm like, yep, yeah, I have to go to the hospital. And it was just like, it was in the winter or something. And I was just like, well, oh, I'm set to go out here. I felt better in the cold, so I just kind of like waited outside for an ambulance to come get me. And they're like, you seem like I'm like, I don't know, I don't feel like right, you know. They called my mom. She's in, she, like, uh, she's a nurse's assistant or whatever, and. uh a medical assistant or whatever. And uh, she's just like, you're fine. You're, you're whatever. And I was like, I don't know, mom. I'm like, I don't think I'm fine this time. I think I'm, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I can't put my finger on it, but I like feel really weird, like bad. And like, I got there. They're like, you're completely dehydrated. And like, you need to sleep. And like, 
You have to you have to sleep. You need to drink water and not just coffee. And you need to eat properly. You can't just like eat snacks to stay awake and like four in the morning, like drawing like. So I at that point I had like my little like life scare and I was like, okay. I emailed the publisher and I was like, I need to take a uh I need to need to extend this part of like the project a little bit. And they're like, oh like that's when you found out I found out that the deadlines aren't really that strict. They're like, it's just kind of like what we're aiming for. Sure. So in my mind, I'm like, they have to be done immediately. Yeah. Like by this day, like everything has to be perfect and done. And they're like, it's, no, you didn't have to like worry yourself that crazy. And like, that's something I would keep in mind for the, if I did the next one. It's like, oh, like if I just needed more time, I could just say like, hey, I need more time, guys. It's not like you imagine, like I guess in movies and things when there's deadlines for like big companies, like it's like you don't get it done. You're, you're out of here, you know. In real life, it's kind of just like, no, it's just they hope you get it done that day. It's not actually due that day. Right. They shoot short yeah. just so everyone's kind of like on top of it. Yeah. It's like uh, it's like when you have a party and you're like, you know, get here. Get here at five and like the party's at six. So it's like no one's going to show up. It's because it's definitely like that. It's like the artist is. Yeah. Doors at, doors at five. Yeah. Like, Show Even starts longer, at seven. Take up yeah. all the time trying to make every panel perfect. I would have if they told me like I had to even like, oh, you have another four months to finish things really secretly. I would have like been like, okay, I'm gonna use all four months and make sure it's like perfect. But then it would have left no time for editing for them or anything. But <sighs> yep, it landed me. It it was so. If you are gonna work on something like this, seven days a week, every night awake until the sun comes up. Mm -mm. Multiple pots of mm. coffee, mm -mm. not a good idea. <laughs> go to sleep. It's not going to go. Anywhere. You're going to wake up and it's still going to. That's the thing. Like with no like, with no Pace one looking yourself. over my yeah. shoulder to like make sure I'm getting it done. Like it's kind of like there was no way for me to know how fast I needed to work to like get to the end. Even when I was like at page 150, I was like, "What is going on? Like these last 50 pages seem like impossible to finish." <laughs> and I was just like. No, just you just have to calm down and just like sit here and just like do it. And it's just that's all you can do. It's like a it's like a mental game just to uh sit there and just keep drawing buildings or whatever it is for hours. It's just like, oh my god. A lot of like professional comics, like superhero comics and stuff, they they break it up into multiple people. Like they'll have a person do pencils, a separate person does inks. A separate person sometimes does backgrounds. But this is just like, you're doing all of it, but we're going to give you a colorist. So it's just like, <laughs> so, let me draw like every single thing ever and make it all work. And it's kind of really intimidating, but I definitely think I upgraded and leveled up as, as an artist now since then. So it's, I learned so much about the process doing it that it's, it's probably the biggest learning experience I've ever had. Just to, starting with just the thumbnails and nothing, the finishing it was one of the, like the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. So, it might be the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, besides burying somebody in it. <laughs> yeah, like, it's up there. It was for like, it's like, yeah, shoveling there's, is there's exhausting. There's times where I was like, can I even do this? And I just feel like walking my dog around in the snow, like. What am I doing? Like, can I like? What? I still have a hundred pages left, or whatever. And I just be like, oh my god, like, I'm so tired. Like, it never uh, fucking ends. <laughs> it, it, that's what it felt like. I was like, <laughs> and then they would, you know, send like, oh, we just want to make these changes. It's like super pleasant email, you know. But in my mind, I'm like, oh no, not changes. Like, <laughs> send me more sames. Yeah. <laughs> Let me go back. Then it's like, let me pause, go back. So then I, I would immediately, whenever they sent them, I would just immediately do all the edits and then send them back and then go back to where I was. Because I, I, I knew if I saved them, it was going to be like way worse. If I just saved all the edits till the end or something and then like went from beginning to end editing, I was like, it's probably was going to be crazy. <laughs> so I'd be like, whatever edits they sent back, I immediately like edited them and just uploaded them to them. And I was just like, I said that's I'm really also glad I did it digitally because I normally work traditionally like pen and paper and 
I knew when I got the project and they told me the amount of pages and like I looked at the deadline and everything, I was like, no, there's no way. Like the amount of paper that I would need to buy, because I know I would I would wreck enormous amounts of pages probably, just tossing paper to into the air probably, getting stuff wrong, spilling the ink, and I knew that it wasn't going to be beneficial to have to scan every single page. Word bubbles, I would have to, I would probably end up printed them on the computer and like floated them over the drawings and there was too many variables to try to like figure it all out in the time that I had so I had to just I was like oh, I'm working digitally on this comic absolutely and for anyone wondering I took like my actual drawing tools I use in real life I drew on a piece of paper with like my actual ink like pen and nibs like for comic book drawing and like my markers and stuff, and I scanned that into the computer, and then I reset all the settings in the program to as close as I could to like my actual uh, my actual drawing. So, if if you're an artist and you work digitally, I would highly recommend trying to do that because once you have all those settings and everything, you can just keep them with you forever, and you can kind of replicate whatever it is. You do, at least for comic book drawing, it works well. As far as like shading something in pencil, it's never the same on a computer. But mm. your main drawing tools, you can probably get them close to real life if you sit there long enough. But uh, whatever I could, whatever I could do to get everything done fast and be productive, I think was the most important part of getting this done. I told myself, and I never, I never really got exactly what i wanted like when i like i'm like i'm doing six pages today and like somewhere around like page four and you're like i'm i can't stay awake anymore like we're not doing six pages today we're just gonna have to i just have to go to sleep especially after i like landed in the hospital i'm like yep once i start feeling like oh, i'm yeah. too tired to do this i don't know if i can even do this i was like nope i'm just gonna go i just went immediately and lay down i'm like i'm done I really got to say, anybody who has a dog, I know you have a, a, an awesome dog, Vito. He he was my best assistant yeah. throughout the whole book. Besides my girlfriend, my dog Yoshi, like, he'd come over to me and be like, looking at me like, we're going, we need to go on a walk. And I was like, you know what? Just taking those walks in the fresh air and going, yeah, around, going around the neighborhood yeah. and like not drawing and I mean, I would still think about the drawing a lot of the time, but, like, just taking, like, a good long, like, I'd walk up for, like, almost a mile or something, like, in my neighborhood. It was, it was, he's in the book also. Um, yeah, I put him in the book. My girlfriend's actually, my girlfriend Tiffany is walking, is walking Yoshi in the book. They're handing out flyers and the, the character's supposed to be disinterested in taking the flyer, so she's kind of she's not a villain. She's not a villain, but uh, it's not the best. But yeah, he that that really made the book. It made it easier. He would come and hang out with me next to the computer and like just be like, "Hey, man, like, what's going on over here?" Obviously, I'm freaking out. Like, in the middle of the night. I think you could tell. Dogs pick up on yeah, all they, of that, he, man. As soon as your mood changes, he they know. Exhausted. Like he'd wake up and look at me over at the computer, like, yeah. "What are you doing over there?" And I'm like, "Yeah, this guy. He's just a dog, but he's not. He he knows. I need he's to go to good, sleep. He's a good, good boy." <laughs> he's like, "You need to stop doing whatever it is." Me and me and my girlfriend had a joke, like, like even if he didn't know, he'd be like, "Why is that? Why is my owner always in the corner, like staring at the wall for like <laughs> for like seven hours a day? Like, what is he doing over there?" Why is he just sitting like still in a corner? Mm -hmm. <laughs> is he what's a wrong? Boy? Yeah, what's wrong with him? Why is he like he really is... doesn't want to look at me right now? <laughs> yeah, why is why is that? Why is my human always just staring at the staring at the wall over there in the corner, mm -hmm. just like in front of that? Yeah, Lena would in front not of that be screen. That. He he got no attention for a day. Sometimes he start trying to like dig a hole through the carpet, <laughs> and then like you, and then I said like you know what I have to pay attention to him. That, that was the other kind of breaks I would take, you know. Like my dog needs attention, I'll just pet him. I think I read somewhere like it releases something in your brain too. I don't know if it's is it serotonin, serotonin from petting man. dogs. Yeah, 
Yeah, he, yep. he, he gave me some good good serotonin on this project. Here he is on page on page project. 75. It's disappearing, <laughs> but you know, I think it a copy you can see him. Yeah, he's saying, uh, would you take one of these? And she's like, No, honey, sorry. <laughs> she just walks <laughs> away with it. But uh we, we we've all been I there. Like, I was like, uh, let me you know like, let me make it look like the dog is uh, yeah, we definitely do. I mean they don't they don't have to do that anymore, right? <laughs> no. We, you guys we still do. <laughs> I remember walking around Babylon for like the entire day with like show flyers back in the day. And like no Yeah, for our show nobody, uh, coming up. We definitely nobody wanted them. Oh yeah, you did. You gave me one of those. But we used to like that makes yeah. sense though. We went in a way that didn't even make sense. We're just walking around like town like <laughs> like anyone right, like yeah. you want to go see my band like you're playing blah blah blah. Yeah, I remember having a show at the Roxy in Huntington, and I was like down by Shore Road, yeah. like stapling flyers up to the poles, like anybody's going to see it. I wonder. Go I wonder though, Huntington like to see if my people band. did go, you probably did. I don't know. Doubtful because we had maybe. some pretty. Th- you guys yeah. had packed shows. We had some pretty packed shows sometimes. I wonder if like did any of the flyers work? You never really know unless they come up to you and tell you. But, like I, I mean, I assume they didn't work either. Like we were like. We didn't know what we were doing in the pre like we said we had some internet but not like now it was just no. kind of like well, here's a flyer and like i wonder if like a kid like a bunch of kids walked up to me now and were like you want to go to my show i mean i would do it probably but it must have been weird like these weird kids like want to come to our show it's three dollars or whatever <laughs> whatever it was like so cheap yeah it was like five dollars i don't think even was five dollars it was like three dollars it would be like some pretty cheap shows. Some, yeah. I think I think eight was like as, right. as much as That's you would pay back in the day. Eight was like a good, <laughs> yeah, it was a good show. It was like eight. Yeah. That's wild. God the band, it. the number of bands to dollar ratio, the show cost, <laughs> <laughs> a thing that changed very, very much. Yeah. Like, what? I'm getting 12 bands for $5? This is great. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. Great. <laughs> Five bands in, you're like, oh, it's like yeah, toilet it paper like... math at the supermarket, you know. Like, we got 10 rolls, but it equals 15, but... <laughs> and there's 12 rolls, but it equals 14. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh man, it's ex- exactly <laughs> same, thing with, same thing with the garbage bags. You're like, uh huh, you want 50 gallon or you want 30, yeah. you want 150, you want 130 uh-huh. gallons or 50. Yeah, uh, check 50. it out, this box. 65 crayons <laughs> <laughs> like, it's got to be designed like that i've heard it's like the, the consumer is completely like what uh-huh. even, what is my even I don't know. 70 crayons <laughs> yeah like what are you even picking like i'll just take got yeah. 12 shades of yellow yeah, yeah you can't use all those yellows this one's got light light yellow <laughs> <laughs> i'm 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 a, i'm a, apparently a professional artist and i know that you can't use all those crayons man <laughs> there's never been a box of crayons where all of them were like down to the nub like right. <laughs> time to get a new box yeah raw sienna <laughs> yeah like you're just like you're just like replacing certain crayons you never like you know right, yeah. all those crayons i wonder though they're eventually going yeah. in that cookie tin right <laughs> they are man what was it Roy- royal dance or whatever uh-huh <laughs> i forgot to mention there was another project i didn't get so there was two fail, two kind of not fails. I was supposed to do a portrait of a uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, and I think the other this girl is from, like erotic fan fiction. <laughs> the, other, the other girl was from Kinky Boots. I forgot the. Uh, it's not a Broadway uh, actress. Okay. What's hmm. her name? I'm forgetting her name right now. She's a pretty famous actress. Um, they were supposed to do. Like an like a uh, Broadway like play of uh, so I think it's Sunday in the Park, Sunday in the Park with George or something like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. Sunday in the Park with George. It's a musical. It's based off of the French um, pointillist uh, George George Sor- Sorat. Actually, I used to say Sorat. Um, of his like Sunday afternoon on the island of the Le Grand Jetty, like that's like an old painting of like everyone's kind of standing on by the shore with umbrellas and whatnot, uh, parasols think, rather yeah. than umbrellas, I guess in the daytime. And, uh, I think that was in my dentist. Yeah. You've, you've probably kids. seen it before, <laughs> but they were, they were going to do it. Yeah. And I was supposed to like do, um, not an original. 
<laughs> I was I was supposed to like work on the uh, the posters. It was it was going to be like used as the posters. They were going to do like a they did it in in New York City, and they were going to do it like a French a French uh, opening of it. And I was supposed to uh, so I was going to do like a pointless kind of inspired portrait of um, Jake Gyllenhaal and the other actress. And uh, what do you know? What what comes along while I'm working on it? Oh, COVID. COVID, COVID yeah, comes along not, while I'm working not, on it. Yeah. They're like, we're not going to be doing any plays for a while, so we're we're gonna we're not going to go forward with the. Uh... And I was like, this is my like awesome. This is like my big break. Like this is going to be awesome. To uh, but, cool oh, Goo Goo Dolls, Broadway is dark tonight. <laughs> oh, 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 this is her name. Her name is uh, Annalie Ashford. Okay, that's the other girl I had to paint. Says she did Wicked musical, Legally Blonde musical, Hair, and Kinky Boots. Um, so I was supposed to do that. They ended up. I, I don't know if they ended up doing the French part of it, but I know like the project was basically canceled. But in my mind, I was like, I'm gonna get on all these posters, and like, there's gonna be like Broadway posters in the middle of France. And I was like, man, I seem to like. If this all works out, I'm gonna like go fly to France and like or Paris or whatever where all the showings were, and I could like take photos of my. Uh... Yeah, your shit will be on subways in France or whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah. I was like, this is gonna. Be, I was like, this is gonna be the coolest thing ever. Uh huh. I was like, this is gonna be so cool. Actually, I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about it. No, I didn't sign the NDA. Um, but I was like, and then it was just like it's canceled. There's like a worldwide pandemic. I was just like, I was like, this this is terrible. And then I got like that other book uh bomb and and the, i did not get that that seems um, like a kind of like would have been a kind of kismet project too though like you know what i mean yeah, i can it, very much see you drawing world war ii atomic bomb stuff well he, well well my <laughs> one of my professors was working on it he he's the one who drew it in the end the guy steve shankin uh wrote it and it's race to steal and manufacture the world's most dangerous weapon i guess it says it's called bomb and uh, I didn't get that, and I was just kind of like, but oh, my teacher worked. It was the artist for it, Nick Bertozzi. He's actually a really great artist too. So it's like, exactly. yeah, it's like, it was like Oppenheimer comic. before Oppenheimer. Yeah. It came Damn. out. <laughs> it, it came out before Oppenheimer. Obviously, Oppenheimer like rules the world with that now. Yeah. Um. But like with Barb Barbenheimer or whatever it was. Um. Yeah. I did not get that. So like. For anyone to, for for an art director to remember me, and like I guess whatever I did enough to like recommend me to another art director to get this was that's the kind of thing that like I don't know you can't control how that happened. I mean, for the chairman at at School of Visual Arts, Thomas Woodruff, to give me the opportunity to do like the the illustrations for that play, that would have been amazing. Um, I might have done something. I might have just started doing that. I don't know what I would have done. And if I would have got the bomb book, I just would have I would have been the colorist on that book. And uh but I think this it was better that in the end I got something where I got to be the main artist on it. So I was like in a way, like not getting the other book was good because we know it's even stranger. Another person that I wanted to color my book was on my three three people uh it said there's three people for my list that I gave the publisher. Uh she's the one who got the bomb book. Ah. So one of the people, the person I chose to color my book got the book I didn't get. I was like, that's so weird. I'm trying to get them gotcha. a coloring job, but they got my job that I was <laughs> that I was supposed to have. So I was like, that's so strange. It's just I, I don't know. That's the thing. It's like I will say that the most helpful thing in me going was was probably me going back to finish college. I had my half of a bachelor's forever, and. uh going back yeah it seems like sva has been a good resource for you absolutely i just yeah. they just reposted my book uh yesterday too but like going back and like school is way, it's way easier like when you're when you're more grown up i was just like oh like why was this like how, such torture how, had, to me? how had school changed since you were you know there previous in our last interview we talked about you were there like 9 11 yep mm -hmm. and it was it was way different because like everyone when we when i went there it was like more i mean it's less computerized it was more uh, I, I don't know punk rock it's more what you think art school would be 
back then. It was like all like the scruffy like punk rock kids and like gotcha. all the all the so so called weirdos from every school. All your goth kids, all uh, everybody was assembled like in one place, and kids from other countries, and and like it was like kind of like the outcasts in a way of society, and they're like all assembled to like do art in these buildings, and like it still feels like it still felt like that when I went back, but not not as much. So like kids are like. It's not gritty like that. We're not. They're not sitting on the sidewalk with like paint all over their pants. Kids, like the kids are cleaner. <laughs> yeah, I guess they're cleaner now. <laughs> they look less like we look less like street urchins. They're well groomed. They're like, yeah, they like well they take, they take showers and <laughs> they're manicured and shiny. They wash the paint <laughs> off themselves. There was there was some some kids who who uh, who kind of stuck to the old ways. You could tell, and I was friends with those kids. I was like, this guy knows. He's got his own band. Or my one friend Alex, he just put a a book out today. Oh no, three days ago. And uh, he's like one of those kids. He's like kind of like the old school our our school kid, you know. He like grew up on Calvin and Hobbes somehow from a different generation. He still kind of still found the same kinds of things. And like had like his rock band stuff because I I had our like band when we were when I was in our school too. It was like. I was like, he's living the same kind of like world, like, but like now. And it was, it was weird. It's just the, uh, we had the main building over there. Like cartooning was like, it was a cartooning school originally, a comic book school. But when I went back, it was like on a side building, like to the side. And now it was like the main building was uh, like graphic design and like film and stuff. So. You know, that's 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 takes more precedence nowadays. Like that's what people want to go to like yeah. to art school to learn is like how do I like direct my own films or animation's really big there now too. Well it always was, but it's even bigger now. And uh, I don't know, completely different universe. But it definitely helped me get this project because if I didn't do really well like I was in the Dean's list for like the last two years I was there, like I think I had 4.0 in every class or whatever. And because uh, it was so much easier, like as an, as an older person to like, oh, I need to study this thing. And I just need to like remember it enough to like write an essay on a test. And like, I could do this. It's like to my younger me, it was like, oh no, like the essay, like, I guess I had more anxiety about life in general. Like it was just like, oh man, this is going to be the like, hardest thing ever. Like, how am I going to like write this essay? But after you've written a million essays, you're like, eh. You just have to explain exactly what what's going on, and you're like, done. The art projects were still difficult, which the professor, I mean, the uh, chairman who recommended me for that that Broadway play, he's the one who interviewed me going back there too. I had to like redo a portfolio to go back to college, and uh, I had an interview with him to like see what like a basically they were just trying to see if I was still an artist. Like you've been out of school for so long, or can you still like, can you still draw good? You know, can you still do like paint paint well or whatever, for you for you to start like two years in. And he's like, oh, he looked at my portfolio and stuff, and he's like, oh, you could just you could do whatever you want. What what do you want? To do? And he just like closed the portfolio, and he's like, where like what do you uh? He's like, these things are like all great. So like, what do you want to do? You want to go back and finish like your cartooning like degree like degree like your BFA. And I was like, he's like, that's going to be the fastest thing because that's what you're already doing. And I, I contemplated for a second. I was like, should I just like switch over to like just flat illustration? Because it's always, it's kind of split in the school. It's illustration like slash cartooning. Like both those like kids, like sets of kids like are together and take the same classes. And um, which is a typo in, on my bio in a way. They said I have a BF, multiple BFAs, which is not a thing. They said I have a BFA in cartooning and illustration, but. I just have a BFA in cartooning slash illustration. Um, but yeah, I was decided, you know what? I'm just going to go back and like try to be like a full fledged comic book artist again. So, and then impress the teachers enough, at least, you know, to recommend me to do stuff. And uh, other kids from the classes impress their teachers just the same way. It's like, uh, that's the big plus of going to that college. So, if there's people listening to this who are artists and, all the teachers who almost all the teachers who worked there like worked 
in the industry, either do still work in the industry or have worked in the industry. Like the person, my prospective teacher, which helped me enormously, her class helped me enormously, like drawing all these buildings and backgrounds and stuff. Um, she worked on the Nickelodeon show, Doug. She worked on Duckman. Nice. And like uh, all that stuff I learned in that class was really beneficial to making this thing happen here. But uh, yeah, that's it, man. In the end, I just uh, I hope people like it. I hope kids like it. I haven't got my full kid review yet. I don't think anyone's done with it yet. Some of our one of our friends' daughters reading it right now, so we'll see what she thinks. All right. So buy the book for your kids and uh, let us know what they think. Absolutely. Or if you get it for yourself, you know, let me know too. You can also, also get it. Yes. You can get it digitally too. Like if you don't want to go out and get a physical book, you can read it on your iPad or whatever it is. But they'll bring it to you. Amazon will send it to your house. So you don't have to go anywhere. Yeah, they will. <laughs> I didn't have to do. I didn't have to leave where I am right now. <laughs> Came right I, to my door. Yeah, they brought that shit to me. <laughs> that's one of the ways I think COVID uh, changed the the world in a big way. I think. It's like, oh, oh, you yeah. know, you know, everything is set up now where you can get anything at home. I feel like, it's true. Al almost instantly, they'll bring me tacos right now if I want. <laughs> yeah, just like, oh, so you're Jim. We're all Jim Lee now. We don't need we don't need a Taco Bell in Calabasas next door. We can uh, we could just use the Grubhub or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna end this here because I've been holding in going to the bathroom for the last thirty minutes. So <laughs> go, go, John. Should win. Alley cross, everybody. Well. <laughs> Johnny says he's bound by only six strings to this. Johnny says he keeps him always one turn out of two. Johnny never listens to the kids that say. Johnny X say never done the right thing. Long live the bench.